GPT 4.5 just launched and the sentiment around this model is quite bad. People are pretty upset that we're not crushing the evals and fully accelerating forward and like conquering all of math, conquering all of programming and software engineering and just like crushing every single eval and saturating all of the, the benchmarks and then saying, oh shit, we're out of benchmarks. People are very upset that that's not happening, which I kind of get. I kind of get it. It's like, I, I want those things to happen too. But the improvement that we got from this model is one that's not measurable. Uh, the improvement that we got from this model is that of an increased worldview. The, the world model of this model is more accurate than all of the previous models. It's even more accurate than the reasoning models. Uh, with the way you need to think about pre-training is you are increasing the accuracy of the model's representation of the physical world. You are increasing coherence whenever you are pre-training the model. You're like tightening the screws, really getting them to perfectly fit and understand the things that are actually happening. It like literally has intuition in the true sense of the word. That's the breakthrough with this model. It's not going to go crush any software applications or crush any mathematics problems or do any of these narrow tasks. No, this model is the biggest step towards AGI we have seen since GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. I'm not interested in the little evals for this type of model. Whenever you launch a pre-trained model like this, it's more about how does it feel to talk with the model? How does it understand the nuance and the context of the conversation you're having with it? And even deeper than that, if you are going to have like uh, a particular a particular conversation at about like a geopolitical conflict or not even just that, but like a investment thesis for it's a particular company given a particular set of initial conditions in the marketplace. What is its worldview of that? How does it an analyze that problem and decision and give actual good feedback to tackle that? Because there is like these things are subjective. There's like different ways of doing things, but there is a best way. And what this model is doing is coherently aligning with the maximally best way to solve those things. It is now becoming intrinsically generally intelligent for the very first time. Oh, one, oh, three, those things are cute. This thing is fucking powerful. That's the way you need to think about this. Now, all we need to do is apply some test time compute, the reasoning paradigm for this model, and you're going to have some higher level abstraction reasoning from this model that is going to be that akin to like Elon Musk or potentially Albert Einstein or potentially like uh, uh, Charlie Munger, depending on what application. Like Charlie Munger is obviously really good for investing. Elon's obviously extremely good for like engineering and understanding like the dynamics of uh, certain engineering systems. And then obviously Albert Einstein's really good at uh, in, uh, coming up with hypotheses and then actually actually figuring out ways to mathematically represent them. This model, I'm willing to bet, given sufficient pre-training, is going to be able to do those things. This is a very profound step forward that not many people are fully grokking. You're not really grasping what this actually means. What is the magnitude of this? Because every single token that is put out in that one initial prompt, the pre-trained model, that just has a knee-jerk reaction. That's what a pre-training model is. Without the chain of thought, without system two thinking, system one thinking. It is a knee-jerk reaction. And yet it still solves problems to an astoundingly accurate degree with just a knee-jerk reaction. Now, what you need to think about is whenever you have a better pre-trained model, there is a limited amount of tokens that this model outputs. Now, the pre-trained model is increasing the effectiveness, increasing the accuracy of every single token in that output. And whenever it thinks longer, you get compounding effects from all of those little increases in every single token compounding on each other. The increases are multiplicative in the token output, which is how you get the O3 model where it's like reasoning to extremely high levels, even though GPT-4 sucks. And if you really wanna see the evals get saturated, use some test time compute, some inference scaling on this big boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna solve your damn evals and you're gonna solve a lot more too. When Satya Nadella said he's waiting for a model that increases the GDP by like 10%, 
it's here, <laughs> it's coming. You just need to give it a little test time compute and then some digital legs to run around on the computer. It'll be solving some pretty, pretty novel things. <laughs> It's uh, kind of astounding, to be honest. Like, I, this is the model that's kind of given me some existential dread um, in the sense that, like, I, I usually have a pretty good sense of things and I have a pretty complex world model for, like, viewing certain things within the dynamics of markets or, like, the dynamics of just uh, the geopolitical world in general or just, like, the, the political or the uh, market dynamics of just within the United States. I don't think I'm going to have alpha there very soon <laughs> which is kind of terrifying but it's also really cool um and i think a lot of people are going to feel the same thing we're all about to have our lisa dole moment and we're all going to be uh getting beaten by this ai next year if not by the end of this year kind of sick kind of kind of terrifying but hey man i guess i'm here for the ride <laughs> and for all of you who are complaining about the price one thing i want to mention is if you look back you know just a couple years to like GPT-2 to GPT-3. GPT-2 was an expensive model for the time. It cost a lot of money. Now you can train a GPT-2 level model for $100. $100. That's at a thousand X decrease in price. Not a thousand percent. A thousand X decrease in price. Play it out for this model too. The same thing's going to happen. A thousand X decrease in price over the next coming years. And uh, at that point, I mean, we don't need any more powerful models if we really didn't want them. <laughs> like, all it really means is like this, like AGI is going to be running on your fucking cell phone and it'll be super intelligent running on your cell phone, like l genuinely super intelligent in the true sense of the word in years on your, on your phone. That's where we're heading. Shit's getting real. <laughs> like you want to talk about the law of accelerating returns being on a, a steep exponential People look at GPT 4.5 and they say, oh, it was a dud. Quite the opposite. <laughs> On a more serious note, I'm going to get a little bit more deep and philosophical on you guys. What does it mean for these models to have true intelligence, true intuition, cognition, in the true sense of the word? And I know there's going to be people in the comments who are saying, oh, these things aren't actually intelligent. They don't have real intuition. They're just like linear algebra. They're just predicting the next token. They're just running on a bunch of ones and zeros. They're just advanced pattern matching systems. And I hear where you're coming from, but I mean, reality is nothing but the instantiation of mathematics. It's hard to tell how much of your cognition is nothing but just computational algorithms. Like we know that you are nothing but a bundle of neurons and synapses obeying the standard model of elementary particle physics. You're nothing but quarks and electrons, not too different from the computational substrate of silicon. Like uh, obviously the substrate itself is different, but if you look at computational equivalents from like Stephen Wolfram, the, the substrate itself doesn't really matter that much. You can have substrate independence as long as you are using the same exact mathematics to harness the same exact computation. Obviously, the algorithms or the computation happening in your brain is much more efficient than the computation happening in these models because you only run on 20 watts. I don't know how much that has to do with the actual intelligence itself. I don't think it's that much. If we look at the, the behavior of these models and how they are aligning coherently and intrinsically grokking words, and not just words, but intrinsically grokking concepts and having a real intuition, the ability to adapt given new context, like that's something that's real intelligence. You can't really make that up. So at this point, we need to ask ourselves how much of what we have done mathematically with these models is reaching out into some law of physics we don't truly understand yet but it is somewhat there there's like something that is like in the corners of biological intelligence that we are reaching into with these models that we hadn't we didn't know we would be like that is completely reasonably plausible and i'm not going to be here trying to convince you on that I'm going to let Michael Levin do that because he is the number one leading world expert in theory of mind and diverse intelligences. He is a biologist and a computer scientist who uh, is the number one person in the world on this topic. I'm going to play a short clip from him. And I, I don't believe, you know, when they say artificial intelligence, I don't believe we make intelligence synthetically any more than we make it biologically. I think what we make are um, uh, pointers or interfaces that pull down certain patterns 
And uh, yeah. sometimes if you're a good engineer, you'll pull down the thing you want, but very often you pull down a bunch of other stuff that you did not expect, not just complexity, not just unpredictability, but actual um, uh, cognition, emergent cognition. And so there's certainly not pulling down anything remotely like a human mind or probably any kind of biological mind, but that doesn't mean that we're not currently fishing in some corners yes. of that space that yeah. maybe have never yeah. been embodied before, probably not on earth, but maybe, maybe nowhere else. And so I think we need a lot of, a lot of caution about that. I, I've had debates with people, somebody who, who, who writes these AIs will say, well, I make them, I know what they, it's just linear algebra. I know, I know what they do. And I said, well, first of all, you don't even know what bubble sort does. And second of all, you know, it's just linear algebra and you're just chemistry or quantum foam or something. But, but, but of course you're not. Right. So why is that? So, so why are we, why are we fairly comfortable to say that the, the biochem, you know, the story of biochemistry is not the story of, of, of the human mind, but you somehow think that the story of algorithms and Turing machines is the story of these things that you're now making. Um, so that's my, that's my story on AI. I think, I think we have no idea what we're making actually very, very, very little.